Pentecost Sunday and I, I, must, I must speak about it and I take my text from the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 41, Genesis chapter 41 and uh, 41, Genesis 41 and 37 and 38, Genesis 41, 37 and 38 and then we shall go to the Pentecostal book of Acts chapter 2. Now we can read together verse 37. It's on the screen. Three go. And the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of his servants. And Pharaoh said unto his servant, Can we find such a one as this is? A man in whom the Spirit of God is. We can repeat that. Three go. And the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, can we find such a one as this is a man in whom the Spirit of God is? Then we go to the book of Acts. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. The Bible says from verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. And it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. And I want to speak about uh, uh, a man carrying God. My topic for the first service is a man carrying God, or a man that carries God. A man that carries God. That is what I want to share for this first service. A man that carries God. And you know, as I speak about this, I don't want you to forget that we are celebrating the Pentecost. And as I've been telling us, the Pentecost is the day that the Holy Spirit was officially released into humanity. And he was not only released upon humanity, but he became an indwelling presence of God. Indwelling, meaning what? He stayed inside human beings. In the Bible, in the past, there was no indwelling of the Holy Spirit except for some few instances as indicated in the Bible. Like the Bible spoke about the Holy Spirit coming upon David after he left Saul, the Holy Spirit coming upon Saul after he was anointed by uh, Prophet Samuel, and, uh, and the Holy Spirit coming from Moses and entered into the people uh, in the camp. Therefore, the Bible in the Old Testament does not speak so much about, about, about the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. But in the New Testament, in the book of Acts, the Holy Spirit speaks about the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. That men began to carry God in the inside of them. They became carriers of God. Wherever they were going, God was going together with them. Therefore, Pentecost was the official day that he was allowed in. Remember, we serve God who appears in the Trinity, God the Father, and we know him as the creator of heaven and earth and all that is, including ourselves. That is God the Father. Then he appears as God the Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and we call him the Savior, the one who came to save us from our sins and restore us back to the image and the likeness of God and the God, the Holy Spirit the helper, the comforter, the strengthener, the paracletus, the one who is with us always and he dwells inside of us. The one that the world cannot receive because the world does not know him. The one that can only be received by us, the believers, and then through us we manifest him in the world. In Jesus' mighty name, somebody say amen. Now as I speak about a man, a man who carries God, Remember, I've taken a good example, the, the Bible, uh, the story of Joseph. Remember, the Bible speaks about Joseph. And Pharaoh himself testified and said, this man Joseph is not an ordinary man. This man Joseph carries the presence of God. And that's why Pharaoh speaks together with other people and he begins to tell them, if we lose this man that carries God, where else shall we find another man that is like him? Because there are very few people in our time that are carrying God. But after the Pentecost, many people began to carry God. And that's why in the story of Pentecost, the Bible says, the Holy Spirit appeared like a mighty rushing wind. And he covered the entire room. And he filled everywhere. Then he began to settle upon the people as a cloven tongue of 
fire, then it was distributed to all of them, entered into them, and filled them. Therefore, it was no longer only one man that was carrying God, but it was every man that was willing and was ready to receive him inside of them and to carry him, even in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody say, Amen. Now, look at Joseph, the man who carried God until he was able to be identified by Pharaoh in the land of Egypt, in the land that was not his land, in a foreign land, because of the God that he was carrying. The Bible says that there were so many people in Egypt, so many magicians that were called to solve the mystery of the king. There were so many scientists, many people that have gone through places and through schools, but only one man stood tall in the midst of them. And this man is called who? Joseph. And when they brought Joseph, Pharaoh saw Joseph and say, uh -uh, we cannot find another man like this one. All of you are skilled. All of you are blessed. All of you are educated. But this man is a unique man because this man has God inside of him. He is a magician of some sort. But the way he's doing his magical work is so differently, is so unique than the way these other magicians are doing. That's why thousands and thousands of the magicians of Egypt have come before me and they have not solved the mystery except this man because this man carries God. That I have men and women who are wise, carrying a lot of wisdom and knowledge in themselves. Knowledge of the physical and knowledge of the spiritual. And I have summoned all of them. And I appreciate all of them. But this man, when he appeared before me, he was so unique in the way he discerns the things of the spirit. So uniquely different from everyone over here because he carries God. Look at the way he advises us on how we are going to solve our problem. Look at the way he has spoken so well on how we are going to preserve the produce of the land so that we may handle the season of the famine. Among us, all of you, I understand that I cannot find anyone like this. His uniqueness is because he is a man that carries God. Somebody say amen. My prayer for me and myself and yourself is we will be able to carry God from today and forth in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody celebrate the King of Kings and give him praise. Give him a clap offering in the mighty name of Jesus. A man who carries God. Remember when Joseph was a small child. Joseph was having a unique thing in him. Joseph had been appointed by God and God had spoken to him that he's going to become a governor and a ruler in some days. And the father of Joseph came out so distinctly and he was so favorable unto Joseph because Joseph was having something unique, something that nobody was having. It took Pharaoh to understand what was in Moses. The Bible says when the brothers took him and they wanted to kill him, suddenly somebody among his brother would appear and defend him. When they threw him in the pit, suddenly somebody would appear who would come and rescue him from the pit. And then when he was taken to be sold, when other people were buying slaves, bad slave masters were buying slaves, suddenly something just happened and a good man comes and buy Joseph. There was something unique in Joseph. He comes into the house of Potiphar. And in the house of Potiphar, Potiphar is thoroughly a sharp man and he was a tough man to all of his workers. But there was something that he was seeing in Joseph to the level that he said, uh -uh, this one cannot just be a worker, but this one needs to be somebody else. There was something unique in this man. When he was taken to the prison there, in the prison, as he was taken among his other prisoners, there was something in him that attracted the bosses of the prison and they discovered a partner. We cannot handle him in the same manner that we are handling other prisoners. Until this day, when he appears before Pharaoh, and Pharaoh say, uh -uh, this man is a man that carries God. Therefore, we must retain him in Jesus' mighty name. This is my prayer for you, that may the Lord reveal his presence through your life, that the world will see and understand that you are carrying his presence. Somebody celebrate him, give him praise, and clap to the King of Kings in Jesus' mighty name. A man that carries God. What is it that was in him so unique that people, that, that, that because he was carrying God, that he was standing even in Egypt, taller than any other person in Egypt, because this man was carrying God. Number one, a man that carries God is a man that has favor. Is a man that has favor.
favor. Any man that carries God, one of the identity that they have is favor. Look at the Bible from Genesis up to Revelation. Every man that carried God in themselves, those people were having something unique that is called what? Favor. Favor. To be preferred above others. That every time this man would stand in the midst of other people, he would always be preferred, not only by God, but also by men, even in Jesus' mighty name. Esther was favored in the midst of many other virgins, and she was favored by the king. Daniel was favored. There are so many Hebrew boys that had been taken to the land of Babylon, but Daniel was favored together with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Favor. Moses appears before Pharaoh like this and Pharaoh is no longer disturbed that Moses is a Jew. He just loves him. He favors him. A man that carries God carries favor. People just love you for nothing. Sometimes they don't know why they love you. Sometimes they don't know why they want to fight for you. Sometimes they don't know why they want to promote your affairs here on earth. You stand in the midst of a crowd like this one and everybody is just excited about your being there. It is something deeper, more than how you look like. Deeper, more than what you have. Deeper, more than where you are coming from. That the presence of God in you, the spirit of God in you, is the spirit of favor. And when he manifests from outside of you, your face, your countenance, begin to be lifted up. Because you are carrying God, people fall in love with the God that you are carrying. Even in Jesus' mighty name, somebody clap to the king of kings. Favor is an identity of any man or any woman that carries the presence of God. When David appeared before Saul, the Bible says, and the man looked so fair. In fact, King said, and the lad was fair. He was favorable. Remember, before David encountered the presence of God in the Bible, he was just being taken like nobody, and his family would despise him and send him to take care of the flock. But the moment the prophet Samuel anointed him and the spirit of God entered into him, things began to happen to him. Some David began to experience favor of God. Wherever he was going, he was favored. He was preferred by God and by men. I pray to you today, as we receive the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, may we experience favor with God and favor with men in Jesus' mighty name. The Bible says that Joseph was favored by his father. He was the second last born. But he was favored more than the last born. Because it is not so easy for a parent to favor a child in the middle of other children. He would either favor a first born or the last born. But Joseph, even though he was a second last born, the Bible says Jacob favored Joseph more than any other child and he even made for him the garments of glory the garments of many colors in Jesus mighty name somebody celebrate the king of kings he was favored by his father somebody say amen I pray that we receive favor here as we receive the indwelling of God may we receive favor in Jesus mighty name People that carry the presence of God, even though they can have so many enemies, but what normally rules their life is favor. In the midst of their enemies, favor will always speak, and somebody will always arise and favor them against their enemy in Jesus' mighty name. If you carry the presence of God in your family, you shall be favored above everybody in your family in Jesus' mighty name. Hey, somebody say amen. May we find favor in the eyes of the Lord. May we experience this favor in Jesus' mighty name. When you carry the presence of God in business area, in marketplace, whatever thing you are doing, it shall prosper because of favor. People will come to your shop to buy 
and there will be other neighboring shops. But favor will be drawing them to you. They will be saying, I don't know why I want this shop and not the other shop. Somebody say amen. If in the place of work, you are bosses and even you are juniors, they will just favor you. They will be coming to share their issues with you. They say, I don't know why I trust this man. It is the concept that I call it favor. That is in the presence of God, in the mighty name of Jesus. In your family, in your marriage, favor shall be your hallmark. Remember Esther. Esther. Esther could go in front of the king. Yet it was, it was meaning a death penalty. If you appear before the king and he has not summoned for you. But favor melted the heart of the king in Jesus' mighty name. I pray that may we receive favor. As we carry the presence of God, may we receive favor. It is like honey. This presence of God is like honey to insects. They are always drawn where there is honey. You will see other insects. You will see bees. You will see other things. They come to lick that honey. God makes you to taste differently from any other person. Somebody say amen. You taste differently. And that's how Joseph tested. They brought the magician. But they were just normal. But the moment Pharaoh tested Joseph, ha, he says, uh -uh, we must retain this man. We must retain him. Because he has something unique. In him, there is a spirit of God. Bwana asifiwe. Favor. Remember people like Daniel. Daniel, the king, the king was forced to kill Daniel. But favor, favor, favor. The Bible says, even when the king punishes somewhere, Daniel, king, the king would not sleep. The king would sleep at night, just crying, thinking about Daniel. And in the morning, he would wake up and say, Daniel, did the God that you serve saved you? Favor. Somebody may receive favor here. Somebody may receive favor here. Somebody say amen. That people will not hate us. They will not fight us. Because favor can open your doors before the kings. Favor can cause you to be accepted in the places where others are rejected. Favor can cause you to access things that no one else can access. Favor brought Joseph into the eyes of the king. May favor bring you into places that you desire in your life, even in Jesus' mighty name. A person that carries the presence of God is a person that has favor. How do we know that you have the presence of God? Because of the favor that you are carrying. Kings will vacate seats for you. High tables will be vacated because of you. Somebody say amen. May somebody receive favor here. May somebody receive favor here. May you be preferred in Jesus' mighty name. If you are applying for anything, may you be preferred in Jesus' mighty name. That they will open other papers and documents, number one, number two, number three. When they come to you, they say, ah, ah, we cannot continue. This person has something that I love. And we are taking him, we are taking her in Jesus' mighty name. When you are standing for an interview, asking for a job, together with us, they will interview number one, number two, number three, number four, number five. By the time they get to you, they say, the interview is over. The moment you walked at the door, the interview was over. I just liked you, and we are taking you in Jesus' mighty name. Favor. Hey, somebody say amen. May you be favored. Enjoy favor. Every time you struggle to be liked. Every time you struggle to be loved. Every time you struggle to be accepted. The time comes. Turn around. Kneel down. Seek the face of the Lord. And tell the Lord, I ask for your presence. Because I need favor. In Jesus mighty name. Spirit of rejection is not a sign of the presence of God. Where everyone don't like you. Tells a lot. It tells a lot. Because everyone loves God. And when you have God, they will come for you. Even the heathens will come for you. In Jesus' mighty name. Somebody celebrate the King of Kings. Give him praise. Favor. 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 May somebody today receive favor. In Jesus' mighty name. 
In every area of your work, receive favor. You know when you have favor and you appear before somebody, uh, they just fall in love. Something just touches them. They, they, they just do not know how to behave fairly to other people. They don't know how to be fair again. If you have favor here, I will not know how to be fair. Every time you, every time you, every time you. Because there's something in you that pulls somebody's eyes. The countenance of the Lord is lifted upon you. His face is shining on you. Therefore, every time somebody looks at you like this, they just think it is you. Hey, somebody say amen. Just imagine Esther. Other, 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 other ladies appearing. Very beautiful. They appear, they appear, they appear. And then when Esther comes, the king say, ah, 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 ah. This is my wife. I'm not, I'm not checking again. This is my wife. Something, something attracted the king. He could not explain. That's why you tell somebody, how did, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know, but I just like that young man. I don't know, but I just like that young woman. I don't know, but I just like that man. Favor. Receive favor. It's a supernatural provision. Receive it today. It is a supernatural provision. Receive it today. It is given to men by God himself. Receive favor today. Even in Jesus' mighty name. Hey, clap to the king of kings. Give him praise. Favor. A man that carries God is a man that has wisdom and knowledge of God. He has a lot of wisdom. He has a lot of knowledge. Foolishness is enough sign that you don't carry God. Hey, somebody say amen. If you discern foolishness in you or foolishness in somebody, even if they give you testimonies after testimonies after testimonies of miracles, it is a lie. A man that carries God is a man that has wisdom and knowledge. That's why the Bible says when the king was trying to look for somebody to unravel the mystery of his dream, they told him that there is a man in the prison very unique. He can do this thing. He has knowledge. When they told uh, the king about, uh, 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 when, the, when the finger of the Lord came to the king in the days of Daniel, when the finger appeared and there was a handwriting, he looked for everybody, but he found none. The Bible says, then, uh, then uh, the, the, the counselors of the king, they told him, you know, in the days of your father, there was a man that is called Daniel among us today. And this man has knowledge and wisdom of God's. You will know them by knowledge and wisdom. The way they do their things. The way they organize themselves. The way they engage with others. The way they plan their things. Wisdom. Look at Joseph. The wisdom that he gives to Pharaoh. He tells him, let your Lord, the king, command that every produce that comes not be sold, but be stored. Because we will sow them for quite a number of years. And after that, now when famine come, we shall be having enough to long last throughout the famine. Wisdom. And the king said, uh -uh, this wisdom is not of men. This man has somebody in him that is greater than men in Jesus' mighty name. Hey, somebody say amen. Look at the way he interprets the dream. The king tells him, I'm not telling you about the dream. Just tell me the dream. Tell me the interpretation. And the man say, it is not in me to tell about dreams, but this is a knowledge of God. And he tells the dream, he tells the interpretation. Somebody say, Amen. And the king is mesmerized by the knowledge of this man. When you carry God, you carry knowledge, you carry wisdom. Foolishness is not of God. Ignorance is not of God. Show me an ignorant person and I will show you the person that does not carry God, even though he comes to the church. Show me a foolish person, and I will show you a person who does not carry God, even if he's a preacher. Because they don't go together. It's like water and paraffin. Hey, somebody say amen. Are we together, people of God? Look at the way they describe David to, to Saul. Saul say, they tell Saul, let us look for a man who is skillful, who is knowledgeable, who is a lot of things, has a lot of knowledge in himself, 
And when David comes, he has all those qualities because David was carrying who? God. And the Bible says, and Jesus grew up in wisdom. Wisdom and knowledge is a sign and a symbol that you are carrying who? God. May we receive wisdom and knowledge. They don't come from books. They come from above. You can have a PhD, but you may not be having knowledge and wisdom. You may be having a master's degree, but somebody who has gone up to class 7 has more knowledge and wisdom than your self. You can be older, but your child may be having more wisdom and knowledge than you. Hey, somebody say amen. You can grow in body, but up there, there's nothing. Have you heard the politicians of Kenya that there's nothing between, between the ears? <laughs> there's nothing between the ears. When someone tells you there's nothing between the ears, uh, here the head is empty. Wisdom and knowledge, they are gifts that come from who? From God. It is God who gives people wisdom and knowledge. Sometimes we find ourselves in a situation and we pray. We tell God, give me wisdom. Oh God, give me wisdom. Give me knowledge. Give me knowledge. Why? Because they come from God. But it is given to men and women that carry the presence of God. May you receive wisdom. May you receive knowledge today in Jesus' mighty name. Hey, somebody shout a better amen. Shout a better amen. Have you ever found yourself a man has been told to come uh, to stand up and address people. And you know this man is well educated. He has good height. He has good stature. But when he opens his lips, you pray that still my pote, what was his case in Yanasema? Because he has wisdom. Wisdom ni amungu. Knowledge ni amungu. Bwana akupatie wisdom na akupatie knowledge. Katika jina la Yesu. Wisdom and knowledge, they enable you to unravel the mysteries of life. They enable you to unravel the challenges of life. You give solution because men and women that carry God, they are solution bringers and solution makers. And you need wisdom and knowledge to bring solution. That's why Joseph brought the solution. Every man or woman that carries God, people will always run to you for counsel. That's why you need wisdom. That's why you need knowledge that comes from God. Your family members, brothers, sisters, parents, they will run to you for counsel. And they must find you with wisdom and knowledge. Wisdom and knowledge as a way of promoting somebody. Even though they are young, they can be treated as elderly in Jesus' mighty name. Wisdom and knowledge, they can give you a table in the presence of the elders of a city or a land, even in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody say amen. Show me a man with wisdom and knowledge and I will show you a man that is carrying God. Because they go together. They belong to God and God alone. And God never releases his product when he is not there. He never sends his product. He never packages and posts it. He comes with it. You draw it from him when he's together with you even in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hey, somebody say amen. God has no messengers. All of us that are called messengers of God is because we are carrying God. That wherever we take the message of God, God must be there together with that message. He carries the message himself. He does not send wisdom and then stay away from wisdom. He sends knowledge, then stay away from knowledge. He has to come himself as knowledge and wisdom. May you receive the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of wisdom today in the areas of your life as a manifestation of the presence of God in Jesus' mighty name. Hey, somebody say amen. If you are a mother, may you have wisdom and knowledge to raise up your children, to take care of your family, if you are a father, may you receive wisdom and knowledge also to take care of your family, to raise up your family, even in Jesus' mighty name. If you are a young man and a young woman, may you receive it also so that you can grow in the Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody celebrate the King of Kings and give him praise.